Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video. And as you can see, I've been making a few improvements to the Jazz Tech set. And it's much tidier, which is a bonus because it means I can find things when I need them. Now, today I'm looking at a bit of a rarity. And I say that because I've tried looking on the net for various information on this, and there's very little about it. So I think it's interesting enough that we need to delve into it. It's rather large, it's rather heavy, but it's rather fabulous. I'm talking about the Marconi TF2333 audio test set, otherwise known as the MF transmission measuring set. Now this is a really useful bit of kit because you've got three things in one rather large heavy box. But of course, being from Marconi, you know it's going to be really well made. So in this rather large, heavy, very well made box, we have an oscillator, an attenuator and a level meter. Very handy. These first came out in 1964. As you can see from the Marconi catalogue, this particular one that I've got here, I believe to be a much later model. There is a couple of differences. There's a pair of input terminals on the attenuator and the set cowl adjuster is different on the level meter. So we'll get to see in a moment when we have a look inside this beauty, if we can find some date codes on some of the components that might give me an idea, because I think this is probably a much later model. Indeed, you can see by these magazine clippings from 1979 and 1980, they were still being sold readily on the second hand market for well over 400 pounds. Now, one thing I did find for this is the original instructions. It didn't come with the unit. I had to scour eBay to find this instruction manual. I think I was very lucky to get hold of one of these. Doesn't seem to be many of these about. And of course, being a Marconi, it's a wealth of information and schematics and pull out diagrams, all the information I need for this model. This isn't even a specific service manual. This is the operating instructions. This is how they used to do things. Not only the operate instructions, but full schematics and instructions on how to service the unit. How fantastic, you don't get that these days. So I've had this one for a little while, but I haven't really had the space to work on it. So now I've improved the studio. I've got a bit more space to work on things like this. Now, I haven't powered this on in a very long time, and I can't really remember what the state of it was. So I'm going to give it a full inspection, check the caps, and have a look inside before I power this up. Then we can get a signal out of it and see what work, if any, it needs. Being Marconi, we know this is going to be built really well inside. So I reckon let's get this on the bench and have a delve inside see what delights we can find inside this Marconi box. So as you can see, I've got a lot more bench space over on this side, which means I can work on some of my bigger equipment. So first thing we'll do is get these cables out the way. This wiring looks a little bit untidy, so I'll give that a bit of a tidy up. These are the old fashioned three pin bulging connectors. These days it's all IEC kettle type sockets. So we've got six screws here to remove to get the back panel off. And then the three units will slide out the front as one. As usual, I've sped up all the boring bits. I'm not too sure what these markings refer to. I've got a feeling this may have been an MOD one, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyone knows what the red square, white square, red circle means? Do let me know in the comments. I would be interested to find out. Now, we should be able to push all three units straight out the front of the case very carefully. They are rather heavy. Just turn this around and there we go. Just ease that out nice and carefully. You can already see the goodness that lurks inside. Very high quality of build standard, as you'd expect from Marconi. 
You can see the three modules together there in the frame. All the wiring very neatly loomed together. Several screened boxes there, obviously to stop interference between the components. So all these caps I'll need to double check. Only the two outer units are powered directly from the mains. And the middle unit, the attenuator, gets its power from the oscillator power supply. You can see this two core cable going from the oscillator to the attenuator unit. So you have got battery terminals there, so you could, back in the day, run this off of batteries. So you've got your selector there for battery or mains and your fuses. And you've got a mini coax there going between the attenuator and the oscillator. Got an OC75 germanium power transistor on the back there for the power supply. Right, let's have a closer look. You can see the mains transformer for the oscillator unit there, very nicely screened in its metal box. And to the left of the transformer, you can see a selection of very high quality polystyrene capacitors for the frequency ranges. Down here, we've got 10 presets for setting the high and low frequency limits of each range. And you'll notice these two valve looking things. They look like little tiny valves on the board. Now, these are not actually valves, obviously. These are thermistors, which change resistance in a linear fashion when heated up. These were often used in early oscillators in the feedback loop because of their non-linear resistance, they give low distortion. Here are the range resistors, precision 1% resistors, which was quite something back in those days. Another germanium power transistor there, various electrolytics, a forest of green caps there, all of which I'll have to test. Hoping I won't have to replace these, as these are not going to be particularly cheap to replace. So we're going to take the cover off the attenuator and have a look in there. Just a handful of screws to remove to get the metal plate off the top. And there we go, wow. You can see some very high quality resistors in there. They look like wire wound resistors to me. You can just see the wire ribbon under the enamel if you look really carefully. Also, you can see that each section is individually screened and one section is passed through to another through these insulators. Very nice construction, very nice fat tin copper wire bus bars. Going to remove the HT lead now, which is only low voltage so we can look inside the individual unit. Ironically, they call it the HT out supply, but it's actually only low voltage, about 18 volts. But obviously this term's carried over from the valve era days where the supply was always called the HT supply. Look how easy they've made it to work on these. I love this. The way these fold out so you can work on them. If you remove the box from its frame, you can actually fold all the sides out. And then it's just a matter of two screws if you need to remove the back panel to work on the board. They've made it really easy to service these. There's the transformer. Polystyrene caps. Here we've got a very high quality Colvern wire wound pot. This is a dual unit for controlling the frequency. Not sure about this wiring though on the switch underneath. Wondering if someone's been in here before me, not sure this looks standard. What's all this goop on the switch? It does look to me like that switch may well have been replaced at some point in its life. So while I've got this unit open, I'm gonna test the ESR of the electrolytic capacitors. So I'm doing this just to see if they're okay and if it's gonna be safe to switch it on. As this hasn't been powered up for a while and I'm not 100% sure of the condition of it, and I don't really want to have to change these capacitors if I don't need to, because although modern radials are quite cheap, these axial caps are very expensive, because obviously they're not in mass production anymore. Some can be up to 10 times the cost of its equivalent radial version, would you believe? Okay, so having checked the ESR of the caps in the oscillator unit, I'm happy with that. Let's close that back up and pop the screws in so nice being able to work on these like this right let's get the level meter apart so we can have a look in here that folds out exactly the same got your transformer there nicely laid out board a couple of caps for me to check there lovely switches and that big 
forest of green caps I'm going to need to check. Really neat wiring looms, you just don't see that these days. Some unusual wafer switches there, looks like they could have potentially been used for a lot more positions than they currently are. Maybe these were used in many different models. Even the small signal transistors are on their own little standoff bases. Lots of Plessy caps here for me to check. But looking at the date codes on some of these components, it seems to date from around 1969. So a quick check on the ESR of the caps in the level meter. But one of these Eries is reading a little bit low. Not terrible, but maybe something to consider replacing. Certainly okay enough to power it up for a test. But first, let's pop the attenuator unit out so we can have a look in here. Nice little unit. You can see how they all fit very neatly in this frame. Take the top off so you can have a look at the load impedance circuit there. A couple more caps for me to check. I better get on and check those. Fortunately, they're all looking fine. So let's put the top plate back on. Have a quick peep at the audio transformer. I'm going to leave that well alone at this stage. Very nicely laid out, nicely loomed up again. Right, let's pop this back together. I've seen enough inside here. Now I'm going to need to ESR this forest of green caps. Now, fortunately, it's really easy to pop the side off these panels so you can get to the back of the boards literally two screws and the side pops off I can get in there and check those green caps and fortunately few those are okay thank goodness for that I didn't want to have to be replacing those that wouldn't have been cheap now while I've got this open I am going to give the pots and the switches a clean with the relevant cleaning substances now let's start getting this all back together and let's get this bar across the back, handily marked as top. Thank you very much, previous owner. That just screws into place, holding all three units together. Case just slides back on and back panel on. I'm going to give this untidy wiring a quick little tidy up. Just a quick fix for now, just enough to test it. I'll do something a little bit more permanent down the line. Plug the bulgins back in. I see this little cutout on the back is most likely where the split for the wiring was originally housed, but this will do good enough for a quick test on the bench. This hasn't been powered up in a long time, so I just want to see what works, what doesn't, and what needs fixing. So I'm going to use the Variac to try and reform the caps, just very gently waking it up from quite a long sleep. You can see the little covers here for the calibration for the meters. You just pop those out and you've got a little screw head in there so you can adjust your meter. Powering up on the Variac, a few little flicks from both meters. Leave that on for a little while just to try and reform these caps. Okay, so it's testing time. So let's hook up some test leads. Pop these in and put that into my scope. So I'm going to hook up a counter and the scope so we can see what's going on with this Marconi. Nice to have enough room on my bench to hook all this stuff up without being too cramped. So let's turn the scope on, counter on. Turn the Marconi on. Now, even though this is transistorized, it does take a few moments to warm up. As you'll see the trace rising up on the screen as she warms up. There we go. Jumping around a little bit there. And there we go. It's going to take a few minutes to stabilize. It does recommend in the manual leaving the unit for at least an hour before you're taking any high precision readings from it. So you can see actually looking at the counter, it's not actually bad. Not far out at all. For its age, the waveform's not quite as stable as I would like, but got to remember this unit's not been on for a very long time. 
the longer it's on the more it seems to settle down to be fair now the bounce you see when I change frequencies is the thermistors in the feedback loop changing their resistance and then stabilizing so you see that little bounce on the oscilloscope so I'm going to try putting the output from the oscillator through the level meter and then into the scope uh, you can see the level meter doing its job very nicely now it does seem like the meter section might be loading the oscillator and I think that might need some further looking at looks like at the very least I'm going to be replacing that eerie cat right further investigation needed but at least I know where I am now have a quick go with the attenuator mm, yeah that seems all over the place mind you it's a very long time since I've used an attenuator like this so I may just be needing to have a bit more of a play around with it get used to it again looks to me like it's picking up loads of mains hum it's all over the place but that might just be me could be user error as i say i haven't touched an attenuator like this in many years so i think that's probably a good place to leave the video for today but at least i now know where i'm at with the marconi i've had it hanging around the place for quite some time now but now since i've sorted the studio out i've actually got enough room to get it on the bench with plenty of space to look at larger items like this Marconi. So I can see that yes, some elements of it work, some not so much. So there's gonna be some further investigation required. There's at least one suspect cap, one of those eeries that I really wanna replace. And I'll do a bit more delving into the attenuator section. Now the cap that I suspected was in the level meter section. So could possibly explain the problems with the level meter or there might be an underlying problem either way it's going to be quite fun finding out so i've obviously got a little bit of troubleshooting to do with the marconi now it might be something that i might want to revisit on a future video but either way i'm definitely intending to get this marconi tf2333 fully working and up and running so I can use it on my bench. It's a really lovely unit to work on. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, taking a look at this classic Marconi. Many thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. It's always massively appreciated. I'll be back soon with more videos on test gear repairs, retro gaming, and electronics kits. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.